Sunday the 16th, thanks for joining me. We're going to have a look at gold, silver, and oil. Gold was paying really, really well. We had the triple bottom down here in October, which I suggested was a very strong buy signal because triple bottoms are really rare. Not too hard to run a long position through there. Then we had a deep setback to the 500-day moving average, and we got a little double bottom there, a real strong candle on the first bottom, and then on the second bottom, not quite so much, but I could even argue that was an evening star pattern. Then we formed this triangle consolidation bull flag, nice flagpole, nice, clear, symmetrical bull flag. The big green candle indicated that the market was going to take off. It didn't take off. We turned around, retested the upper trend line of the bull flag, and then we started to move higher. And we beat the previous high of 2031 on green candle. It was telling me that the next leg higher in gold had started. So this big red candle on Friday was a complete and utter surprise. I did warn you that we were hitting this trend line about a month old, and it was possible that the market could have a small correction. I think that was about a 3% collapse in just a matter of a few hours. I didn't expect that. I can't pretend that I did, but I just hope that my warning did perhaps persuade you to at least exit some of your long positions. But I'll be honest with you, a big green candle like that with a close near the high of the day after such a breakout really would have convinced me to be on gold over the weekend. Anyway, we've collapsed. Now, this was triggered by Federal Reserve members, ECB members, talking about higher interest rates for longer. This has been a consistent message for many, many months. And I don't know why the market keeps convincing itself that interest rates are going to get cut. The central banks are really trying to regain credibility after losing control of inflation. And don't forget, interest rates are still below the rate of inflation, even though inflation has been easing off lately. They're making it clear, higher rates for longer. Maybe finally the market is paying attention to this. So what does this tell us? We're still in a bull trend, and I'm not going to ignore that right now. I'm not going to get into a short position just on one candle. The thing is, every time the market has taken a hit because the Fed has said, remember, we're going to put rates up and they're going to stay higher for longer, the market, after two or three days, has just ignored it. Anyway, if we continue to go down, we've got some support around 1975, 1970. I've put that on the trade sheet along with some other levels. We'll see how the market reacts on Monday. Silver finally broke out. As soon as we broke out, and I got on this really early. I suggested this was a buy signal. Now we pushed up, up, do a bit of a pause here, and then we continued higher. So it really was looking quite good by Thursday. I had no reason to suspect the market was going to reverse. Looking at the longer term charts, weekly chart, monthly chart, nothing to suggest that silver was going to collapse. However, we did form a bearish engulfing candle when the market was hit with the panic that interest rates are going to stay higher for longer. Higher interest rates are not good for gold and silver. Gold and silver do not produce a yield, whereas if you own stocks or bonds, you're going to get a yield. So when interest rates look like they're going to go up further, it hits precious metals because people think that investors will move and into higher yielding bonds. Quick lesson in how I draw my Fibonacci levels. I've taken the swing low up to the swing high so I can see where the support levels are. And here we go. We've got a good support level around 24.65, 24.60, which does tie in with some little swing lows here too on that consolidation phase. That should be a good support level. It looks really nicely when you put in the second set of fibs around the 61.8% level. And I've got a level around 25.15. That's how I've managed to identify this as a more minor support level, but look how nicely it ties in with the price action. All the little highs here for the five-day period, we actually held it really nicely on the downside on Friday. But this is exactly how I build a picture for my levels, and I put in the trend line here, going back to the 16th of March. It's been touched at many points throughout the trend line's life, which just reinforces the fact that this is an important trend line. When we get a candle on Sunday night or Monday morning, it's going to come in beautifully, bang on that 25-15 area support level. I included oil in a video last week. I talked about how the market gapped up through this trend line and hit this trend line. A trend line held for longer than I expected. But as I wrote in my reports and as I stated in my video, sooner or later, I think we're going to break up. And we did. That was the buy signal on the break above $82. Now, the market dipped to my buy level, which as you know, is $82 down to $81.60 on Friday. The low is $81.76. I think we're going to build into a bull trend. I'll be talking about this for a long time in oil. So I think we will eventually break above the moving averages. I'm long a little bit of oil and looking for it to push higher. If you're a subscriber, you've already got the today's reports and you've also got my cheat sheet of trade ideas. If you're not a subscriber, then you really need to be. Go to my website, tradeideas.co.uk and you'll be presented with this little form. Just fill that in and you will sign up for my 
series of five free ebooks and lots of other offers. Scroll down and you'll see the subscription offers. Sign up for a free mentor session. So 15 minutes, you get to chat to me, ask your questions. I'll help you with your trading. All free. Aren't I a generous chap? Okay, hope that was helpful. I'm now going to get on and have a look at the Forex markets and record another video for you.